welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming an exciting new video. It is about my first impressions on the Naked Reloaded palette. Obviously you guys saw in the title. We are playing with this palette today. I just received this in the mail on Friday, I believe, and I was not planning on buying this. I'm sure you guys know that already. And when I saw Trend Mood's swatches, I was like, oh my gosh, that looks way more beautiful than what I had originally thought the palette was going to be like. I'll throw up a picture so you guys know what I'm talking about, and then I put it in my cart, and I was like, Karen, no, like, <laughs> you're not going to like this palette. Don't buy it. Don't buy it. I battled, I battled, had a stressful day at work, and I was like, totally use that as a justification to pick this baby up, and I was like, whatever, I'll buy it, I'll try it, whatever. So. I did get this and I just wanted to show you guys, here is my original Naked palette. Oh my gosh, me and this palette, we have been through some things. My friend Trisha gave me this for my birthday one year, I want to say like in 2009 or 10 and honestly guys, you would be hard pressed to find a palette as well used as this one in my collection. I don't use this on my eyes anymore. As you can see, the shades I've hit pan on are half-baked, smog just fell out, almost hitting pan on sidecar, naked was a favorite, buck has a pretty decent dent in it, toasted has quite a dent in it, didn't really use gunmetal, creep, or hustle, well hustle I used a little bit, uh, dark horse looks pretty untouched, but yeah, it's just so funny to look back at this palette. It, just gave me all the feels that day when I was sitting and thinking about how much I love this palette and I was like, you know what? I justified it, you guys. It's terrible. I was like, oh, I owe it to myself to try the new palette out. That's what I did and I got it and now looking at it, I love the redesign of the packaging. I like that they took out the brush portion, which is great. I think it didn't really need a brush at this point. Everyone pretty much has their favorite brushes. When I bought the Naked palette, it was my first taste of like a nicer brush, so I really appreciate that, but I understand not everyone does. Some of the things about this palette, they do claim that it is like universally flattering. I personally don't see that. Um, on the back here, it says, remember getting naked for the very first time. I do. Do it again with Naked Reloaded. Modernized, must have neutrals with a whole new edge. With 12, can't live without nudes. From soft mattes and satins to dimensional sparkles and metallic shimmers. The go-to naked shades you love just got a glow up. The Naked Revol Revolution started with our search for the perfect desert island shades and the journey continues with Reloaded. So this is the packaging or the box I should say. It's very nice. Everything's nice. Everything is really really nice. I just was really excited about this palette and it just bought me back to the good old days of being a poor college student. So let me go ahead and swatch this for you guys. So here are the first four shades. And I must tell you guys, Urban Decay is one of the first higher end brands I started playing with. I picked them up when I went on vacation to Hawaii in 2009 and it's just been like an endless love affair with them since. And I cannot tell you the last time I bought a Naked palette or an Urban Decay palette and enjoyed it. So I was really, really had high hopes for this guy. Just based off of looking at it, I do feel like this palette really isn't as close to the Sultry palette as it looked on first impression. This is very much true to the Urban Decay formula. I prefer the Anastasia formula. I used to love Urban Decay eyeshadows, but I think over time I've just really preferred the Anastasia mattes. I love the Anastasia metallic shades, and their shimmers are just much more of an oomph. But here are the first four shades, because I'm getting so sidetracked. This is, we have Bribe, we have Barely Baked, Angel Fire, and Retro, which is kind of the shade everyone is comparing to Bloom in the Sultry palette. And I'm actually wearing an eyeshadow look, which I will show you guys next after the swatches. Um, that I created using this palette. So here's the next three shades. We've got Reputation, Burn, and Endgame. And then the last five. Ooh, their mattes are soft. That one shimmer did not have much pigment to it. And the last few mattes you guys are probably not even going to see on me. So we have 
uh, Dreamweaver, which really has barely any shimmer. We've got Distilled, Bucked, Boundaries, and Blur. Boundaries is like the more neutral peach color, and I'm actually wearing that in my crease as well. Um, so here are the swatches of the Urban Decay Naked Reloaded. I also have to tell you guys, the Soldier palette did go on sale this week, so I actually repurchased it. I wish I had had it in time for this video, like my first impressions video, because I could have done a better comparison. I actually ended up returning that palette, and I already talked about it while I was doing this eye look, so I'm not going to get into it. But for $27, I figured I could spare it and get it back. So anyway, really quick, let's go ahead and jump into this eye look. I created using the Urban Decay Naked Reloaded palette. Okay, so let's dive in to my first time using this palette. Now, I'm sure you guys have seen a million reviews, but this is really stunning packaging. It's got like a satin situation, and this is what the palette looks like. I've really been like loving neutral palettes lately. So when this launched, I kind of was like, ah, Kind of want it <laughs> and i like that they eliminated the brush i think it's nice that they had a brush in the palettes because like this was my first palette so it was my first chance to try like a high-end ish sort of brush but i get it you know it saves space and it seems like they did pass on the savings as far as cost to consumers as well because the palette is 45 i think dollars um so I just thought I'd mention that, but as per usual, I didn't clean my brushes in time. So I'm gonna clean them while I'm doing this. This folds back really nice. Oh, this feels really nice in my hand. So this is my Sonia G Blender Pro, and I really want to go into the shade Retro, which a lot of people compared to that um, shade in the Soul Tree palette. Was it called Bloom? I actually ended up taking my sultry palette back because I didn't think I would get good use out of it um, because I thought it had a lot of like cool toned um, mattes and then like some warm toned shimmers so it just didn't make a whole lot of sense to me so I did take that back but this week the palette was on sale so I did actually grab it on Macy's because I was like I don't want to pay like 40 bucks for the palette but I'm okay paying like 27 bucks for it so I rebought it and I'm excited to have it in my life again. I think I really like the shimmers in that palette. So yeah, I'm glad I was able to purchase it at a discount because I always jump the gun and buy palettes at full price and then they go on sale like very quickly after and I'm always like, damn it. So this shade, it is very crumbly. As you can maybe tell, it definitely is falling all over the place when I dip this brush in it. I do like the pigmentation of this color. It's very like salmony peach color. Is it like amazing? Not really. <laughs> Is it like a revolutionary shade? Not really. That's okay. And next I want to go in to the shade Boundaries, which is like another cream color. I was watching a lot of the videos that Urban Decay produced on this palette and they're like, oh, a palette that's flattering for, for every skin tone. And I'm like, really? Is this palette gonna work with every skin tone? Cause I don't think so. I really don't think so. I mean, I'd be interested to know if somebody that was darker than me can use it. And I also think it was kind of odd that they said, oh, these pack palette, um, these two um, shades would be bigger, Bribe and Blur, which usually people run through those shades the most in a palette. But I feel like that's very one-dimensional, that's very one skin tone because I don't think every person that's, you know, a deeper skin tone or a medium skin tone is running out of this shade and this shade. I feel like this is definitely like a brow bone color for most people and then this is like a crease color for most people, but not, like for me, crease shade would be like this color. So I would want a bigger one of that, not so much for this because if I put this in my crease, it'll just be like I blended a very creamy shadow and this boundary shade is also like very neutral I don't know it's not like these like amazing shades that they made large I think they definitely did that keeping in mind more Caucasian beauties so I think it's interesting that this palette claims to be like 
a palette for every skin tone. Now I haven't watched anyone else's reviews on this palette either because I knew I was going to film this for you guys. So if you see any one that's darker than me filming a review on this, I'd love for you to leave a link in the just like in the comments because I want to see if this is flattering for other people. I freaking loved my original Naked palette. I should have bought it with me to show you guys. I'll show it to you once I'm done filming this look. Um, I mean, it's like the most loved palette in my collection from back in the day. So I, I don't know. I felt really nostalgic when I saw that they were relaunching this. So that's why I bought it. But yeah, I haven't used the original in forever. So... Yeah, that's pretty much it, and now I'm picking a lid shade. I think I'm going to go into Reputation. Now, I've been using my fingers to apply my shimmers because I have short nails now, and why not? It's definitely a very... Sorry, I just cleaned my finger off on my towel. It's a very um, hard-pressed shimmer, and it's kind of a drier formula. It's not like a silky smooth shimmer shade. Um, so it definitely reminds me of the Naked and Urban Decay formula. Is it my favorite formula for a neutral palette? Absolutely not. Although it used to be because I didn't know any different, you know? All I knew when I started off was the Naked palette. So that's kind of all I had. Um, so this is pretty much my eye look done. It's very, very neutral. And I just want to put in some eyeliner. And when I do a neutral eye look like this, I like to use my brown eyeliner. This is Black Coffee from Pat McGrath. She's got eyeliner pencils. I used one of her eyeliner pencils in another video. And you guys actually commented saying... You didn't know Pat McGrath did eyeliner? So just so you know, she does. And she actually has about five shades, I believe. Like she's got three different browns, a black and a blue. So I hope she does more shades. Now I'm just gonna grab my Sonia G Blender Pro and just smoke out the lower lash with whatever's left over on my brush. And I feel kind of funny, but this palette is pretty underwhelming for me based off of like first impressions. And it was funny because uh, my friend um, Hot Mess Ness kind of called it. She's like, let me bet that you're going to return that palette. And I was like, no, I'm not. It's going to be really nice. And then... Um, Vanessa's gonna be like eating her words, but nope, she was right. This palette is pretty freaking boring. <laughs> and it's nothing against neutral palettes because I want to show you guys a different palette that I've been loving recently. Um, and compare this one to it once I do my face makeup, but first impressions, kind of a boring palette. Um, Okay, I did bring some face products I wanted to show you guys while I try on for kind of first second impressions. This is the Wet n Wild Sunset Strip Tree Strip Tease bronzer I picked up. This is a new bronzer and I found it at Walmart and I was really excited. I wasn't gonna buy it because I have so many um, bronzers right now, but it was like under five dollars and I was like, you know what? I would love to feature affordable products. Been on a real affordable product kick recently, so I thought I would show that to you guys. And then I love this blush. I use it on my friend Jelsa as well. This is Sweet Cheeks from Rimmel, and it's a maxi blush. They had uh, four shades total. I kind of am tempted to pick up more, but I figured I'd be okay with just the one. And it's like a beautiful peachy color. Oh my gosh, it's like um, the shade I love is like a 
peach color because it looks like you've just ha like been outside and it's like a kiss of the cold and just a beautiful color. So I wanted to use that on camera. And then I've never tried any of these. These are the Wet n Wild highlighters, the loose powder highlighters, and this is the shade Hustle and Glow. They actually had all four shades at my local Walmart, and I picked this one because I thought this would look the best with my skin tone. So let's try it out and see. And this has been like my favorite highlighting brush. It's like a more uh, dense highlighting brush, and it's from Morphe. I don't actually know if it's for highlighting, but it's the M438. And I don't know what to expect, because I've tried one loose blush before, or one loose highlighter before from, um, what is that place called? Or Artist Couture, and I was not a fan. Oh shit, that was too much. <laughs> I was not a fan of it. Um, because it was messy and I felt like it was overpriced and overhyped by YouTubers. But I've heard a lot of people talking about the Wet n Wild. So this is the side with highlighter. This is the side without highlighter. And I know oh, a lot of other brands have come out with loose highlighters as well. But I didn't want to pay too much money for one. So when I saw that Wet n Wild had one... I was like, great, let me get an affordable one and try it out. And that way I'm not spending too much money. So there is that. And then I've been trying to use up this Milani um, Make It Last Setting Spray. Okay, my towel had to come off because it was falling off. And so, okay, and then lippies, I want to show you some new stuff I picked up. So here is some new ColourPop stuff I picked up. I picked up two of the Ultra Blotted Lippies. One is from Kathleen Lights. It's Little Star and then we have Sleepy Eyes. So these are like gonna be some go-to colors in the spring, summer time. They also gave me this as a freebie. This is the shade Wild Nothing, which is beautiful. And then I picked up two shades from their new formula, this is their Velvet Blur formula. I picked up Y2K and Super Bloom, which is like a red. So I'm gonna try Y2K. And it's like a, it's kind of like an ultra blotted. You do have to build it up a little bit. Mm. And underneath, or on my lips, I had on the Laneige um, sleeping mask. I just put that on anytime I get out of the shower. I have it in my bathroom upstairs. I really like this color. These are like my favorite like mauve everyday shades to wear. I would have put a lip gloss on top of it, but I don't think it really needs it. So this is it. I'm going to do my hair and I will be right back. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed the eye look. Now, first impressions, as you could tell, not in love with this palette. The other thing that's weighing really heavy on my mind when it comes to a neutral palette is that I just picked this one up by ColourPop. Now this is the ColourPop Brown Sugar Palette and also ColourPop has a lot of beautiful neutral palettes. One of my favorite palettes by them is the I Think I Love You palette. One of my easy go-to neutral palettes and then I meant to not pick this one up but they were having a sale and I was like, sure, why not? Let me buy it because I thought it would be a nice palette to use when I do like other people's makeup. And I actually wore this palette to work the other day and I was so impressed by the eye look I was able to create with it. I posted the look on my Instagram stories and I thought it turned out really beautiful and this palette's like 12 bucks. So now I'm really kind of weighing out my options as far as neutral palettes and I feel like you know Urban Decay really stood out back in the day because they were really the only ones that were doing the type of palette that looked like the Naked palette but now there's so much competition can Urban Decay really afford to make something that is so one dimensional when I can buy a much more affordable palette and definitely create a very similar look. So these actually went on beautifully. I wore this coppery bronzy tone on my lids and I was obsessed and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so happy about this palette because not only is it affordable, it's really 
bringing me a beautiful basic neutral palette so whether I'm traveling for like a work trip or just even for fun I know I can bring this with me and do some day looks some nighttime looks this one for me is just I just feel like I was expecting more so I just want to let you guys know based off of first impressions I would pick this one over this one and I feel like you're gonna get more bang for your buck if you pick up the ColourPop palette. So that's just my first impression of the Naked Reloaded palette. I'm sorry if this video was <laughs> kind of like a wah, wah, wah tone, but I just wanted to tell you guys how I truly felt. I feel like having bought the Brown Sugar palette and trying the Naked Reloaded for the first time, I feel like the Naked Reloaded Reloaded was kind of a waste of money. So hopefully that'll kind of give you guys an idea of whether you would enjoy this palette or not before you pick it up. So I hope you guys appreciate my opinion and thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you guys in my next one soon. Bye!